Good day. I'm here today with Katie the Koala, uh, living in an RV, as you can see from the small kitchen in front of me. And what we are going to do is teach you how to do $10 meals for four in 10 minutes or less. Well, about 10 minutes and about $10, but we'll do the best we can. Uh, as I said, we're living in a trailer right now. We have a small stove in front of us, uh, spices. Katie's going to uh, coach us through this with her spoons and her measuring cups and she'll give us a hand. Uh, so without uh, much ado, we're going to do a pork chop dinner with baked potatoes. Uh, we're going to have cornbread stuffings, applesauce, and chocolate pudding for dessert with bananas on top. Now when I say it's less than $10, uh, I broke it down. Our pork chops, we do most of our shopping and our 10 for 10. So realistically, they're a dollar a piece pork chops. Cornbread, we happen to like uh, the cornbread stuffing at great value, which is Sam's, uh, not, or uh, in this case here, Walmart. And uh, it's as best as any, and it is actually $1. Uh, great value applesauce, $1.68. Read the ingredients quite well. It's just apples, sugar, and water and sorbic acid, and that just keeps it from turning color. Uh, everything here is as natural as we can get it, and we will use uh, the local or the store products if we feel the quality is good, and uh, the ingredients labels are good. So we're gonna break a second and get ready. We just finished discuss discuss discussing our ingredients we just finished discussing our ingredients and I want to talk about our utensils. I almost always use a cast iron frying pan. Uh, one of the advantages of cast iron is it does put iron into your food and most people, especially uh, women, need iron. Uh, so in lieu of getting a supplement, start using a cast iron on a regular basis. Uh, I'm going to use just a standard cooking pot. I do use stainless steel. I don't use aluminum. Uh, I had a father pass away young uh, for uh, Alzheimer's, and one of the researches showed that Alzheimer's has a enlarged level of aluminum in their body. So I don't use anything aluminum, including antiperspirants, which are a major aluminum. Uh, potatoes, we're gonna be using a, and you should get one of these, a potato bag. And when you microwave it and you use a potato bag, it keeps it soft and steamy. Uh, so we love using one of those and your standard knives and measuring cups, whisks, and so on and so forth. So that is the equipment we're going to be using. And again, we'll be starting the clock pretty much uh, after the next break. Now, as I set my costs, one of the things I'm not going to include in my around $10 meals is spices. I believe everybody should have a large amount of spices. You'll see I have spice racks here. One whole shelf of my closet right behind me is more spices, uh, liquids, soy sauces, that kind of stuff. One whole shelf in my refrigerator is nothing but uh, general towel mix, any kind of liquid, uh, chili sauce, so on and so forth. So those, I think, are part of your standard inventory. And what I usually do is every time, I, every week I go shopping, I buy one ingredient and replace it. Uh, even if I haven't run out, I replace it uh, because it might be getting too old. So with this case here, I did take the four pork chops that we're going to be using today, and again, these were a dollar each, and I put on a uh, Sower's pork rub. I happen to like the pork rub in itself. I put it on a little bit early so it has a chance to soak in. This has been sitting in the fridge, uh, soaking it up, and you can see it's uh, starting to melt in. It has a lot of uh, liquids like salts and so on that will start becoming in 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 bold in, in, in grained is the best word, into the pork chop itself. Uh, oh, here we go. The first thing you need to do on a potato is you need to wash it, even though it's usually washed ahead of time. I'm washing it right now in the sink that's right next to me. Okay. Second thing you do with a potato is to keep it from bursting. You have to puncture it four or five times. Uh, and again, this will keep the skin from blowing up. Old wife's tail. Next thing you're going to want to do is to keep the skin soft on potatoes. You are going to put a generous amount on your hands and coat the potato. I'm not going to do it in front of the camera because I'll have to clean the floor afterwards. <laughs> the 
I'm going to do the second one right now generously and this will keep your potato nice and soft as it steams. The reason we're doing a potato first is the potato will take about the longest. Uh, mine is set for potato is set for two potatoes. I've never done four but uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to take our potato sack right here which I showed you. I'm going to put my four potatoes in. Uh, when I do afterwards is I'll clean it. I'll just invert it inside out and put it in the in washer and get it cleaned. And here we go. Four of them in. I'm going to throw it in the microwave. Set it on potato and start. Next I'm going to put the stuffing on. Stuffing in itself, if you follow the box, it says one cup of water, which again I'm doing down below the camera. Let's read it again. It says one and a quarter cups of water. One and a half cups of water. One and a half cups of water. I'm going to get that on the stove right now on the back burner. My greasy hands which I'm going to clean in a minute. Wants a half a stick of butter, which I have on the counter right here. I'm going to put the half stick of butter in, put the top on, and that's good to go. Next thing I need to want to get going is my pork chops. Now I'm using a cast iron. Cast iron has a tendency of uh, heating up slow, but once it gets hot, it gets hot. So what you're going to do is keep it about an eight or a nine and uh, the minute it's about ready to put the pork chops in, you're going to turn it down to about six or seven. I'm putting, I do use olive oil a lot. I'm putting about uh, six or seven tablespoons, just about a nice coating along the bottom. Just so when you put the pork chop in, it's going to come just a hair up on its sides. Uh, so we're going to let that cook and I'm going to wash my hands and get some of that uh, olive oil off it that I just used a minute ago. So we have the stuffing on the back cooking. We have the oil getting ready for the pork chops, which are right there. The potatoes in the microwave already. Those are your three entrees. The fourth we're going to use uh, is going to be your applesauce, which is just going to be served in a bowl on a table. So that'll be your four ingredients. Many people say, well, gee, you're having a cornbread, a stuffing along with the potato. Well, it stretches the meal out a little more, but Realistically, your protein is your pork chop, uh, your bread is your cornbread, your potatoes is a carbohydrate, your applesauce is a fruit. When you get into the pudding and you have your bananas on top, it's another fruit. Uh, when you make the, uh, the pudding itself, you're going to use milk. So there's your dairy. It's pretty much a complete meal. So we often do the pork chop with stuffing on top, and you'll see why later on. Now how do you tell when your oil is ready? You take a few drops, put it in, you'll start hearing it. It will tell you when it is ready for the pork chop. It'll start splattering to a high level and at that point you're going to turn it down to six or seven and uh, drop your pork chops in and that'll take about six to seven minutes. Again close to our timer. So again you hear it splattering nice. It's about ready. Uh, this will also keep it from sticking to the bottom of the cast iron if you make sure the oil is hot enough so it'll sear the minute it hits. So I got the pork chop in one. The water's shooting up about like a fountain. Three, four. Now these are a hair thicker than the pork chops I normally use, so it might take a minute longer. Uh, I'm leaving it still on eight or nine. It is not quite up to the to the temperature that I want. One of the interesting things is that uh, cast irons, once they get too hot, will start smoking. Once it's smoking, you've gone too far. Uh, it means also run for your uh, smoke detector. Uh, it's got a nice sizzle. You can hear it now. At that point, uh, the microwave's going. I'm going to start turning it down to about a six. I don't want it to burn the oil. Again, I did use olive oil. I like using olive oil a lot. Uh, I've used canola oil. Uh, many other different types of oil. I just like olive oil. Uh, use whatever you think is best, uh, but it doesn't seem to burn on me. Uh, while we're doing that, 
we're going to take, start working on our dessert. Uh, to be honest, it's 68 cents, chocolate pudding. It's a sweet. Nobody argues with the dessert afterwards, uh, so it's not the most expensive. But uh, in this case here, it's telling me to two cups of cold milk. Head for the fridge. It's cooking fine. I'm going to grab my cup. All I had in it was water. I'm going to put two cups in it. Apparently Katie's going to be left out. There's really no measurements on this as far as her little measuring spoons. Uh, and then obviously, as you know, uh, Katie's a vegan. You know, lives on eucalyptus leaves. But either way, she's a great sport. I am using a whisk. Uh, when you live in a trailer, your space is always at a premium. And you always have to decide what's most important in space and what's not. While we do have a blender somewhere in this trailer, uh, it would probably take me longer to find it than it would be to whisk the pudding up in the first place. So, it's done. What do we do with it? Refrigerator. Your dessert's almost done. Uh, I usually use a fork to flip these over. You can use tongs. I'm gonna give it a nice flip at the beginning. It's turning light brown. I might cook it again. On the other side, we'll see how it goes. Now, while I'm doing that, my stuffing just came to a boil. You read the instruction directions, it just says add the stuffing mix to the liquid that we have prepared and uh, let it sit for five minutes. Pretty cut and dry. Five minutes starts. It'll actually come out when I'm ready for it. I like using wooden spoons, so I'm going to stir it in. Make sure all the seasoning gets displaced. Making sure that the uh, all the chunks seem to get a little bit of water on it. It is cube types. Uh, what we'll do is we'll mash it down later. I happen to like my more stuffing mix. So again, you'll see it. Top back on. It's starting. Now the six, uh, I, this power number six, I don't know if it's six minutes went off on our baked potatoes. What I'm going to do is check it. It's not done. I'm going to put it for four more minutes, which will push us right to the end of the 10 minutes. Uh, way you potato, uh, the way you tell a potato is done is you stick it with a fork and the fork should go smoothly and cleanly in and smoothly and cleanly back out. So again, that's going to take a little longer. We'll get this into the sink. So we're still doing well with the potatoes. We're doing well with the uh, pork chops and the stuffing is done. I said earlier is I use a lot of rubs. I use pork rubs. I use uh, chicken rubs. Uh, when you see many of the chef programs on TV, they're either using rubs, seasonings, or uh, they make a lot of uh, uh, creams that they put on top of it. I, at this point, don't have a blender, so I can't do the creams. I'm relying on bottled creams if I need it. Uh, but realistically, I use just spices, and I use a lot of rubs. Uh, one of the things I do is use a lot of spices that are a mixture, an Italian mixture. You know, it's basically your basil, your oregano, so on and so forth. So it's basically just a bunch of the same spices you would use individually all put together. It saves time and again, most importantly, it saves space. Uh, potatoes are running. I'm going to pause. Okay, I accomplished what I want. I got the milk back in the fridge. Try and get everything back in the fridge as quick as possible. Uh, Katie, now let's talk about Katie. Katie the Koala has been with us for many years. Uh, I had the good fortune, I uh, worked for United Technologies and I went to Australia for a year uh, and uh, managed uh, a full department of import-export of product in and out of uh, Australia. That being said, we discovered uh, Katie at one at the Barwon Animal Farm. Uh, she was uh, a resident there and at that point we fell in love with her and decided it's time to adopt uh, Katie and uh, 
bring her along with us. Like I said before, she is a vegan. Uh, koalas mostly live in the same tree most of their life. Not only do they live in the same tree, they live on eucalyptus, which unfortunately eucalyptus is a little, uh, it slows them down. Uh, it's a little bit of a, what do you want to call it, uh, an aphrodisiac to them that just, just slows or sets them down. They often never leave the same tree. Uh, pork chops. Now what I'm going to do with the pork chops is, I'm going to flip them one more time. The browning ice on the back side. I have my oven on. We're not eating this for about another two hours. So one of the advantages of this meal and being in a cast iron pan is I'm going to throw it right into the oven after I put the stuffing on top and let it sit there for two hours till Mary comes home. Now, I always cut my pork chops because I really don't like raw pork. It's realistic. I don't like raw meat. Uh, mine is usually medium, uh, medium rare at the best. But if you open up a pork chop and it is red inside of it or very bright pink, it is not done. When I cut these, they are just a very pale pink, just a tinge. And I'm going to stop it at that point. Uh, if I was frying it, I might fry it a little bit more. But since I'm putting it in the oven for two hours, I don't want it to overcook. So this is done. I'm going to take my little handle from my cast iron, pour off the oil, because I'm going to be throwing it in the oven for a while. I poured off the excess oil. I'm taking our stuffing. Like I said, on the stuffing itself, I like, well, if you have grandkids or kids, get them to make you some of these. These are nice. These are the old, uh, uh, you buy the loops and you have the loops to put them together. Every time I can get some of my kids, I get it. Now, I happen to like mine a little pastier, so what I'm going to do is kind of mash it up a little bit instead of being cubed. I like mine a little patient, a little pastry, a little uh, smushed. Then what I'm going to do is... There's the advantage of working right in front of your utensils. I'm going to take a scoop of each, put it on top of each of the pork chops. This will keep it from drying out and it's part of our meal. So at that point I just have to take it out of the oven and go with it. So again, this is ready for the oven. The oven is set at, I have it set at about 250. So here we go in the oven. Potatoes. Let's see how we're doing. Nicely done. Okay, so I had to give it an extra four minutes. Uh, what I said to this recipe is you can do it inside or out. The difference in doing it outside is you would use your Coleman grill for cooking the frying pan type event that I did here. Uh, the potatoes you would actually wrap in aluminum foil and Sorry about that. Wrap in aluminum foil and then cook it into the coals themselves. Remembering that the coals are about 25 degrees per coal. So uh, if it's a wood fire, don't put it directly on the wood. Brush it aside, put it on some coals. Uh, if you are uh, cooking it on charcoal, just again, clear a little so it's not too thick at the bottom. Set it in and kind of three quarters cover it over, even cover it over a little bit. And just take... Uh, a toothpick every now and then and just stick it into it and see how it does. Uh, what I said before is the fact that we're not eating for a couple hours so to keep it from drying out and I'm gonna take one out I'm gonna try and roll these out so you can take a look at them. Okay there they are. Uh, you'll see the skin is nice and soft. It's nice and flaky. Uh, it's well done but the oil keeps the uh, uh, keeps the skin from drying out and the piercing it ahead of time keeps it from blowing up. So what I'm going to do is at this point I'm going to throw each of them into a sheet of Reynolds wrap. I do love the sheets and it's going to go in my oven and we're done at that. In the oven is going to be my entire dinner on a 
cast iron uh, pan. I'm going to take it out, set it in the middle of the table. I got my potatoes. Everybody gets a potato. Uh, the dessert's in the fridge. All I'm going to do is slice up a few, uh, uh, a few, one or two uh, bananas on top of it. And to be honest, I ha always keep whipped cream in the free fridge. So I'm going to throw some whipped cream on top, at least mine. And that's a full meal. It runs about $10, and outside of all the side talking I did, takes about 10 minutes. So, this is used from Outdoor Staycation. I wish you would give me a thumbs up. Again, this is going to be a weekly video. We're going to do cooking in an RV uh, for around $10, around 10 minutes. And uh, Katie and uh, I are looking forward to seeing you at our next adventure. Again, thumbs up, subscribe, Hughes Outdoors.